we are going to take another look at the problem that we had yesterday. So, I am just going to once again redraw that task graph corresponding to the differential equation solver. This is essentially what it looked like. There were a total of 11 nodes. I am going to leave out the variables used for the inputs and so on and just concentrate on the node IDs themselves. So, what we can see is there are a total of 11 operations, 6 of which are multiplications, 5 are ALU operations, either addition, subtractions or comparisons. Right? To simplify matters, I am going to right now assume a problem of homogeneous processors, all operations can be executed on a given processor and further assume the unit delay model, which means that any operation that gets scheduled on a processor completes after one clock cycle. So, just the cycle in which it is scheduled is the cycle during which that processor is busy with that operation. In the next cycle, it is free to do something else. Okay. So, one way by which we could systematically put down a possible solution for this is, first of all, let us start by putting what is the limit that we want. Okay. We need something in order to constrain our search space. right? Otherwise, in general, if I say, okay, you know, I am not putting a constraint on the latency, I am not putting a constraint on the resources, the number of possibilities is essentially infinite okay, and is also somewhat meaningless. I mean, it just means that you can pretty much put anything that does not violate the dependencies and you are done. But obviously, that is not what we are interested in. We want, we are interested in the cases where we are putting some kind of constraints or limits on the either the amount of time that can be taken or the number of resources that are available. Okay. So, the first thing that we can see over here is, I do have a fundamental limit that I cannot finish this on these kind of processors in less than 4 clock cycles. Why is that? Because the critical path is 4 time units. right? Now, in to make my scheduling problem a little bit easier, I am going to introduce one dummy sync node. right? I had mentioned this briefly yesterday. Here, I am going to make it explicit. I will basically call this as whatever the sync node. I will give it ID number 12. Uh, this is not necessary and put arrows from all the other terminating nodes to this one. right? Why am I putting dashed lines? Because they are not really dependencies, they are not true dependencies, they have been introduced only for the purpose of the scheduling problem. Okay? And more importantly, as far as I am concerned, all that it really means is as soon as operation number 12 is scheduled, it means that I have completed my entire schedule for the rest of the system. Okay? And more importantly, let us say that operation 12 is scheduled in time step t, it means that the actual latency is t minus 1, right? because all the required operations have been scheduled at least one step before that, because 12 can start only after all the other dependencies have completed. Okay? So, 12 is introduced purely for the purpose of scheduling and will be discarded at the end and in fact, one clock cycle will be reduced from the latency to just account for that. Okay. So, with that in mind, what I can now say is, I am now interested in, let us say, I want to find a schedule for these operations that finishes within 5 time steps, okay, including operation 12. That is the minimum that I can target. Okay. So, what I will say is, let us say T 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I am starting from 1 now instead of from 0. In general, you know, I mean, I am sometimes you are starting from 1, so sometimes starting from 0, it does not really matter, right. Usually, it is clear from the context what I am implying over there. So, if there is any confusion, let me know, but otherwise, it should be fairly clear in each case what is being done. What I am going to do is essentially create a grid, right. And on the vertical axis, what I have is the operation number. This is operation 1, operation 2, operation 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and I also have 12. Okay? And what I am going to do is introduce some variables. I right? will call this x 11, x 12, x 1 3, 
etcetera right. So, this will be x 2 1 x 3 1 and so on up to x 12 1 right. So, please keep in mind that x 1 2 is different from x 12 right. I am just using a simplified notation here. And finally, what I have over here is x 1 5 up to x 12 5 ok. So, these x's are essentially dummy variables that I have introduced right new variables I am not calling them dummies they are they're essentially some variables that I have introduced over here that should hopefully help me with my scheduling problem ok. What kind of constraints can I now put on the values of the x's that is primarily what I am interested in and the goal that I am trying for over here is if I can put a sufficient number of constraints or you know numerical constraints equations if I can write down a bunch of inequalities or equations over here that capture all the constraints that need to be satisfied right. Then maybe I have I can convert this and essentially now that what that means is I need to solve for a set of x values ok and there are ways of doing it because there are other techniques that are known techniques for solving systems of linear inequalities. More importantly given a set of linear inequalities and one cost function I can optimize that, that cost function subject to all of those linear inequalities that is essentially the area of mathematics called linear programming ok. In our case we have one further constraint which is that it is not generally linear programming I am going to further insist that the x values should take on integers they cannot be 1.5 for example ok. So, now let me look at what I am implying by the use of these x values right. Essentially what I am going to say is that any x i j must be either 0 or 1 it can take on only 2 values and another term that is sometimes used to identify such variables is that they are called indicator variables. And you can think of it this way if any x i j is equal to 1 that indicates that operation number i is going to execute in time step j that essentially is what it means right. So, that is why the term indicator variable. So, what x i j equal to 1 implies is that operation number i is going to execute in time step j good. So, can you now think of one inequality or equality that I can write corresponding to this for operation 1. Is there anything I can say about the values x 1 1, x 1 2, x 1 3, x 1 4 and x 1 5? The sum must be exactly equal to 1. Why? Because the operation has to be scheduled ok. It has to be scheduled in either step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4 or step 5 ok. So, the simplest constraint that I can write over here is sigma x 1 j is equal to 1 or in general for any operation sigma x i j is equal to 1 ok. Now, there are a few further things that you can probably write over here which is that you can probably just look at the graph and say that look x 1 I mean operation 1 cannot be in time step 5 because time step 5 is reserved for that dummy node that I introduced at the end that is ok. The point is we can think of how to simplify this and reduce the number of constraints or the reduce the type of constraints further but at least this captures exactly what I need right. So, in general sigma x i j over all time steps is equal to 1 for all i. What does that mean? Every operation has to be scheduled in exactly one time step ok. So, the x i j actually indicates the starting time step. When you have unit delay it also indicates the ending time step, but in general it is used to indicate when the operation starts ok, which is why we can very clearly say that at any given point in time sigma x i j must be equal to 1 when I sum over the time steps that is to ensure that every operation is going to be scheduled. Can I say anything about a sum across a column what does this indicate? If I take one time step and add up all the x i j's across it what does that give me? the number of operations that have been scheduled into that time step ok, which basically gives me the number of processors that 
are required for that time step. Okay. So, this is number of ops, ops in time step 1 is equal to number of processors required in time step 1. So, right now let us uh, you know uh, uh, right now I will just leave it at that and then tell you how we will make use of that later. The next thing that I need to worry about is constraints right what constraints the dependency constraints. So, for example, I have a dependency between 1 and 3 that is only after 1 completes 3 can start. How do I capture that dependency? I need to know the actual time instant at which 1 has been scheduled right. So, just having the indicator variables is not sufficient, but how can I convert that indicator variable into the actual value the time instant at which it has been scheduled. In other words is there an expression that I can get for T i actual starting time of operation i right. I could sort of go through all the x i j's and find out which x i j is equal to 1 and that j is what I am looking for okay, but can I write it down as an expression. I do not want to I mean I, I know how to do it, but I would like to write it out as a mathematical expression that can then be used in a constraint. So, what did I say I essentially need to go through all the j values and find out that particular j value for which x i j is equal to 1 exactly right. So, it is a summation of j into x i j right summation over j. So, essentially what this means is x i j is equal to 1 only for one of those j values that particular j value is the one that is going to come out. Okay. Now, if I have T i is equal to this then I can essentially say uh, let me just change the terminology I am going to make this L. So, that I can then write T j is equal to summation over L, L into x j L. So, then I can write T j minus T i greater than or equal to D i j which is the delay of the operation from i to j that is basically operation i in this case it is equal to 1 right. So, then I can write summation L x j L minus summation L x i L is greater than or equal to 1. So, effectively this is what I have I have one set of constraints here that is just the schedulability of a given node and constraints here which says the data dependencies. And finally, if I am looking at the particular problem that I am interested in a resource constrained schedule that is I have a limit on the maximum number of resources that I can use sigma x i j sum over i for a given j this will give you r j right the number of resources used at time step j must be less than or equal to some r. This is my resource constraint. So, this first constraint is talking about schedulability has the operation been scheduled at all or not. This is data or task dependency and this is resource constraint. So, these three sets of constraints they are not individual constraints they are actually each one is a set right. So, this first one schedulability is for all i for every task it has to be scheduled the data dependency is for every edge i to j there will be one such constraint and the resource constraint is for every time step there will be one such constraint 